In today's video, we're going to be talking about the client server model, and we're mainly going to be covering replication. So what is replication? Let's assume that on my desktop, I have a text file and I have a friend called Bob that also has a text file on their computer. And let's now imagine that I open my text file on my computer and Bob opens his text file on his computer. Currently, my text file and Bob's text file are both in sync. But if I add the character A to my text file, we're no longer in sync. But if I call Bob on the phone and tell him to add the character A to his text file and he listens to what I tell him and he adds the A, he has now replicated my text file. So now we're both back in sync again. When we think of the A on my computer and we think of the A on Bob's computer, while they're being the same thing, we should not think of them as the same entity. We should think of them as two separate entities. Another thing that we need to know is that I can't force Bob to do anything with his text file. So I could add the character T to my text file and I could call Bob on the phone and tell him to add the character T and he may or may not listen to me and decide to not add any characters or he could even add a completely different character. And if Bob wants to, he could even go in and remove a character or he could even change a character to a different character. And even if I call Bob on the phone and ask him, what characters do you have in your text file? He could lie to me and say that he has the characters AT when in fact he only has the character I. Let's now take a look at replication inside of Studio. So I'm going to create a base plate project. I'm then going to go to the test tab and I'm going to start a local server with just one player. So now we can see two instances of the game running and we can imagine just like the notepads that the server on the left side is running on my computer and the client on the right side is running on Bob's computer. Now it may feel like that we're both running the exact same game, but this is just an illusion. My computer is running a game completely independent from Bob's computer and Bob is running the game completely independent from my computer. Now, if I open Workspace on my computer and on Bob's computer, and if I rename the spawn location to A, we can see that the spawn location on Bob's computer also got renamed to A. Now, this effect may seem like magic, but it's not. All that's happening is the server running on my computer sends a message the Bob's computer over the internet telling Bob to rename the spawn location to A and Bob listens to the message from the server and replicates the server. Now just like the text file if Bob wants to he doesn't have to listen to the server and he could rename the spawn location for instance to C and now Bob sees the spawn location name set to C while the server sees the spawn location's name set to A. And if the server asks Bob what's the name of the spawn location, Bob could lie and say it's called A, where in fact it's called C. It's also possible to see how much data is being sent when we send messages to Bob. And to do that, we go onto the View tab, click on Stats and open Network. We can do the same on Bob's computer and open the network stats. And let's now say that I create a part in Workspace and we can see that a message was sent to Bob's computer and Bob listened to the server and replicated the server. And if I go onto the part and select the part on Bob's computer, and if we look, it's not anchored on Bob's computer and not anchored on the server's computer. And if I anchor on the server, the server sends a message to Bob telling them to anchor this part 
and Bob listened to the server and anchored the part on their computer. And just like before, if Bob wants to, he can set anchored to false and ignore what the server tells him. And now they're no longer in sync. And according to the server, the server thinks the part is anchored while Bob sees the part as not anchored. If I now go to the home tab and select the move tool, and if I move the part that we created, we should also see the part move on Bob's computer because every time we set the position of this part, the server will send a message to Bob with the new position and Bob will listen to the server and replicate what the server says. So here we can see it move, but because Bob's computer thinks this part is not anchored while the server thinks the part is anchored, if I move this up into the air, we can see that Bob's computer makes the part fall down to the ground while on the server, the part stays anchored in the air. And if Bob decides to start listening to what the server says, the server could set anchored to false and then back to true. And now we can see that the false message was sent to Bob. And because it was already false, it stayed false. And when we set it back to true, a message to Bob was sent saying set anchored to true. And now Bob has listened to the server and set anchored to true. So now when we move the part, we can see that it stays floating for both the server and Bob. Now, if we look at the outgoing overall kilobytes a second, we can see it's roughly around 0.16. And if I start moving this part very quickly, left and right, left and right, we should notice that the overall kilobytes a second increases. So let's start moving it. And we can see it goes to around 1.5 kilobytes a second. And if I stop moving the part, we can see that the overall outgoing kilobytes a second goes back down to 0.16. So here we can see the messages being sent to Bob. Now, if we did this the other way around, so instead of the server moving the part, if we made Bob move the part, if we look at Bob's overall outgoing kilobytes a second, it's around 0.18. And if I start moving the part, we can see that the kilobytes do not increase like the server. And we can also see that the part on the server does not move. This is because Bob does not send the position in a message to the server when it changes the position. Because Bob realizes that even if it sent the message to the server to change the position, the server would not listen to Bob and say that Bob does not have permission to change the position of this part. Roblox has something called network ownership. And what this does, it allows physics simulations to be calculated by either the server or a nearby client. So what this means is if the server sets the parts anchored to false, so now we can see the server sent a message to Bob telling Bob to unanchor the part and Bob listened. So now the part is unanchored on both computers. And now because the part is unanchored, the server is going to now start utilizing the concept of network ownership. And because Bob is currently closest to the part, the server will automatically give Bob network ownership of this part. And because Bob is now the owner of this part, Bob can set the position of this part and send the position to the server in a message and the server will listen to Bob and update the position on the server's computer. So here we can see that Bob has an overall outgoing kilobytes a second of 0.18. And if I start moving the part, we can see that it replicates to the server. And we can also see that the overall outgoing kilobytes a second increases from 0.18 to 0.8. We always need to be mindful of anything that gets replicated from the client to the server. So now that Bob has the power to position this part, Bob can ruin the experience for other players by positioning this part in places it's not meant to be. So let's now try some other things and see what else can replicate from Bob's computer to the server. If I scroll down to attributes on both the server and Bob's computer, 
And if I add an attribute on the server, for instance, an attribute called ABC, we can see that the server sent an event to Bob and Bob received the event and listened to the server and replicated the attribute. Now, if I set the value of this attribute to T, we can see that Bob listened to the server and replicated the value. Now, if Bob changes the value of the attribute, so if I change T to C on Bob's computer, this is not sent to the server in a message and does not replicate to the server. And if Bob decides to create a new attribute, so let's create a Boolean and let's call this T and press save. So now we can see that Bob has two attributes on his computer while the server only has one attribute on their computer. And if Bob changes the value of this T, it does not replicate to the server. And if Bob deletes the ABC attribute, we can see that also does not replicate to the server. So attributes replicate to the, from the server to the client, but no attributes replicate from the client to the server. If I go to Workspace and create a script, we can see the server sends a message to the client and the script is replicated on both the server and the client. And if the server makes a change to the script, we can see this change is also replicated to the client. But if the client makes a change to the script, this change is not replicated back to the server. And also if the client makes a script inside of Workspace, this script is not replicated to the server. And the same is true for local scripts and modules. So if the server makes a local script and module, the server will send an event to the client and this is replicated to the client. So let's open on, we can see the same script. If the server makes a change, it replicates. If the client makes a change, it doesn't replicate. Same is true for modules. So if we open the module, if the server makes a change to the module, it replicates. If the client makes a change to the module, it doesn't replicate back to the server. Now, the character of the player is networkly owned by the player. So Bob has ownership of his own character. So what that means is Bob can select his character and move it and it will replicate to the server just like the same way when we move the part. Now, if we go inside of the character and select the humanoid, for instance, and we can see that the display name is player one, and we can see the humanoid on this side is also player one. So if the server changed it to player two, we can see it replicates to the client. But if Bob changes it to player three, we can see it does not replicate to the server. And if we test health, so if I change my health from 100 to 50 and we check the health on the server side, we can still see it did not replicate to the server and it's still set to 100 on the server. But if the server changes it from 100 to 80, we can see that it does replicate to the client and the client's health has changed to be the same as the server. Let's now see if changing the state of the humanoid replicates to the server. So if I open the command bar and if I type in workspace.player1.humanoid change state and I set the state to jumping and press enter, we can see the state replicated to the server. But what if I set the state to something else, for instance, dead? And if I press enter, we can see it replicates to the server. If I now go to the avatar tab on the server side and click rig builder and create a block rig, we can see that this dummy gets replicated to the client and I can move this dummy around and the position gets replicated. And if the client moves the dummy around, it doesn't replicate. Now, if I set the dummies humanoid root part anchored to false, you can now see it's no longer anchored. And now I can move on the server side. And if I move on the client side, it now replicates because the client has network ownership of this dummy.
if I duplicate this dummy on the server side, we can now see there are two dummies and it replicates to the client. But if I duplicate the dummy on the client side, we can now see that there are three dummies on the client side but only two dummies on the server side. So this dummy created by the client does not replicate to the server. And let me now destroy these dummies and just keep one dummy. So if I destroy this, and now we only have one dummy. And let's see if I can set the state of this dummy using the client. So I'm going to replace player one with dummy and I'm going to set it to the dead state and we can see it replicated from the client to the server. So if I now create a new dummy that's not dead and if I set the humanoid root part to anchored equals false and now we can see that I should have network ownership of this dummy so I can position it on the client side and if I open the command bar and if I type in workspace.dummy.humanoid.rootpart and I call the set network owner function and I set it to nil which means the server is now going to own the dummy so if I press enter and now if I try to move the dummy on the client side we can see it no longer replicates to the server and if I move the dummy on the server side it does replicate to the client and now, because I don't have ownership of this dummy, I no longer should be able to set the state of the dummy. So if I set the state to dead and press enter, you can see it never worked and the dummy is still alive. So let's now take a look at tools. If the client creates a tool, we can see that the tool exists for Bob, but does not exist for the server. So it does not replicate. But if the server creates a tool, we can see that the tool does replicate to Bob. And if we create a part for the tool, we can see that this part replicated to Bob. And I can change the name to handle, and that also gets replicated. I can change the position, and that gets replicated. And Bob should also be able to change the position because this handle is not anchored. And because it's not anchored, whoever's closest gets network ownership of the part. And if Bob tries to set the parent of the tool, so for instance, if I move the tool into the camera, we can see that does not replicate for the server. But if the server moves the tool into terrain, you can see it does get replicated for Bob. But if the server puts the tool into the player's backpack, we can now see that this gets replicated for the client. And now that the tool is inside of the backpack, the server is now going to give permission to Bob to parent the tool into their character. So if Bob moves the tool into their character, it replicates from the client to the server. And then Bob can move the tool back into their backpack. And that also gets replicated to the server and if Bob wants, can move it back into their character. And from their character, Bob also has the permission to move it into Workspace. So now we can see Bob was able to send the parent of Workspace to the server and the server accepted this parent. Now, once the parent has been set to Workspace, now Bob no longer has permission to move the parent. So if they Bob moves it back into their character, it does not replicate, and we can still see that the tool is in workspace for the server. So in this video, I've shown you a handful of cases when things do and don't replicate from the client to the server. And hopefully this video has shown you how you could test for yourself to see if something is replicating and if something does not replicate. Thank you for watching my video and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below.